Hi folks, Sexlizers here. Uh, today we're going to have a little look at this knife here, George Wooston Home Knife. Now, this was sent to me by um, Eggington Brothers, who are the group that own uh, George Wooston Home name, name and the Joseph Rogers name and the Ibison name. And they're famous um, hallmarks, um, not hallmarks, trademarks. Worston Home is uh, with the ICI XL trademark that was granted in 1787. Joseph Rogers have the even older uh, trademark of the Star and Maltese Cross, and Ibison has the double sharp uh, trademark, all of which have sort of modern resonances. Um, case knives, for example, using two X's as opposed to two musical sharp notes uh, to again say so they're double sharp uh, unexcelled the range from GEC and quite sure has its inspiration in the IXL um, name here anyway this particular knife uh, say it's been sent to me um, I didn't pay for it so you know you can take into uh, take everything I say here with a sort of slight pinch of salt but I'm not going to say anything controversial anyway. This is just a, an initial look at this knife. And um, uh, so, any, but I just wanted to make that clear. Um, I didn't pay for this. So, um, you know, you, you can consider whether my information I give you is um, unbiased or not. Um, I try to be as unbiased as possible. And if, um, if I don't like it, uh, if I didn't like it, I would tell you, or I just wouldn't show it at all. Uh, and But fortunately, of course, this is a really lovely knife. Anyway, if we let open the box inside, we will find a letter. Um, on the back of the letter, it has this uh, crest, which is the crest of the uh, Cutler's Company of uh, Hallamshire. Now, Hallamshire is um, the, the old county name for where Sheffield used to. Sheffield's still in the same place, but it's now uh, part of Yorkshire. But in those days, it was Hallamshire, and um, this is, was the crest. Now, I've come across this crest before. Uh, this particular knife here with the stamp bolster was from Michael May, and I think he had a, a supply of these bolsters that had been stamped and uh, he kind of used them up and he doesn't do them anymore unfortunately which is a shame really because it's quite a nice one incidentally it's um more of a sort of nickel silvery bolster uh, michael may almost exclusively use his brass so again it's slightly unusual for one of his knives anyway that's not what this is about what this is about i'll just quickly turn this letter over um and we can see here, if I can make a little enough room to get it on the desk, that this is uh, knife number 20 and it was made on the 15th of February this year, so just uh, last week. And what it's celebrating is the uh, 400th anniversary of the Company of Cutlers in Hallamshire. They were founded in 1624, it tells you there's a bit of the history, 1624 by an Act of Parliament to promote, protect and promote the cutlery and steel products made in the city of Sheffield. And this is George Wistonholm knife. Wiston Home, George Wistonholm himself um, what is one of the best known knife makers from Sheffield, obviously. Uh, probably very few of you watching this will not have heard of him. But the person himself, Mr. Mr. Westenholm himself, um, who's, who's actually his real name has a couple of extra letters in it, but it's Wollstenholm with an E was his name, but uh, the company name George Wollstenholm shortened, um, move, removing an L and removing an E. But anyway, he was. Um, he served as Master Cutler in 1856. So, you know, that's just that's an interesting thing. Um, I notice his uh, 
trademark, the IXL trademark was granted in 1787. So either in 1856 he was very, very old, or it was granted to somebody else first and passed on to him, which I think is the truth. So uh, this has got a nickel silver bolster. Uh, I'll, I'll show you this when we, when we see it. Table blade. Now this is the the sort of important bit at the bottom here. Um, this knife is limited to 2024 only. So they'll make it this year, they won't make it thereafter. And they're all numbered. Um, the first uh, knife, number one, was handed to Charles Turner, who is the current master uh, cutler um, for this year. Um, and here at the bottom is Eggington Brothers Limited www.eggingtongroup.co.uk This was who uh, sent me the knife. I thank them very much. Because actually, and this is not giving anything away, it's a beauty. So, if we take a little off the box inside, we have this knife here. And at first sight, you could be forgiven for thinking this is one of those sort of fancy uh, coloured carbon fibres, but it isn't. This is um, actually stabilised birch burr. And this is something I didn't know. Well, I just uh, learnt this week. In Britain, we would call this burr. If you were an American, you would call it burl, with an B-U-R-L. We call it Burr, B-U-R-R. -R. Um, it's usually it's the wood that's found in the sort of root ball of a of a tree, and it has wonderful figuring in it. Uh, now, it's entirely natural, except for the fact that it's been coloured green. The green is not natural, but it's still very lovely. Um, now, I say this is a Barlow knife. It has the elongated bolster which is the kind of signature of a barlow and it has on the bolster here the date 1624 2024 and the crossed swords from the uh, insignia of um, the company of cutlers now I'm going to do something very foolish I'm going to open this knife on camera very foolish because usually when I do that I end up cutting myself so let's hope we don't cut myself today this knife has a, a reasonably strong action but not um, one of those sort of nail breakers so I can open it quite well not quite easily quite easily is a relative thing because obviously I have a um, great deal of problems trouble with my hands um, but I can open it and it has a bit of a satisfying um, click to it once it uh, will snap to it once it opens. Now I just need to wipe this blade. This knife is in a beautiful polish but as a result it does tend to uh, be a real fingerprint magnet. I've just wiped it and it's already got fingerprints on it. It's a lovely polished blade, a lovely polished bolster. The bolster is a nickel silver by the way. Um, and uh, the blade is in steel, uh, probably 420 HC. I don't know that, but um, it doesn't give me any clues here, either in this or in the letter. It just says high quality steel. Now, what you will see is the very, very traditional IXL George Woods Worston Home, Sheffield, England, um, on the the. Um, on the Ricasso there and as I said before we've got the the bolster and then on the blade something I really like I know this doesn't suit everybody I mean, somebody said when I showed another IXL knife that they thought that I spoiled it but you have the IXL now I don't think it's stamped into the blade but it is a, a, a deep etch I don't think it's likely to uh, wear out and disappear we also have a long pull and we have obviously a clip point blade which is a really good general purpose uh, blade and 
probably the most common amongst Barlow knives, certainly Sheffield Barlow knives, although you do get spear points and you do get lamb's foot, um, even the odd Warncliffe, I think. But may, the most common by a mile is the clip point. Now, one thing I would did I was struck by when I opened this knife is it's relatively small um, compared to a Taylor's Eye Witness Barlow. You know, it's just a, a, a chunkier knife all round. Um, you know, when y you could measure them and say they're not, don't seem that different. It's, uh, you know, maybe uh, an eighth of an inch longer, if that. But it j is just a chunkier, beefier knife. Whereas, I think this is most similar to one of the uh, Boker Barlows. Now it's not the same knife, although you know when if you saw the two of them separately, not exactly side by side, you could think them almost identical. They're not. Um, the blade shape of the uh, Boker is slightly different. You've got a, a different length of tang. You've got this gold um, plated. Um, I don't know what you call it, it's not an etching really, but um, but I suppose, well, maybe it is. Um, you've got a similar length of bolster. One of the things that um, Boker do that annoy me though is they put a shield on this bit of really quite nice desert ironwood and there's no um, stamping on the bolster. Uh, Worcester Home, uh, unsurprisingly, have got it what I would call right um, just as incidentally um, so do tailors they they stamp their bolsters too um, just in terms of whilst we're looking at the size the um, rough rider or in this case marbles knives are actually a little bit shorter than the Worcester home one though again they feel a bit chunkier particularly this ram's horn because it has quite wide um, covers on it oh, somebody told me off the other day for calling them scales um, I don't really think it matters a great deal I don't get head up about it but as I say this one um, is a little shorter but is uh, a little chunkier and uh, because a lot of my um, viewers are American here the case case Barlow for um, comparison again this is like the um, uh, Rough Rider stroke marbles um, knives a tad shorter than the Worcester home but much much chunkier all round um, this is a much more dainty uh, gentleman's knife now as I say, this is a beautiful knife. It's beautifully made. Its action is lovely. I could manipulate it a little bit better. It would be easier. We've got brass linings, nickel silver bolsters, the stabilised birch burr handles in dyed green. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. And as the letter said, um, this knife is number 20. Um, which is a nice low number. Uh, Boker number some of theirs as well. Uh, they put the numbers on the back of the spring there. That's number, I think it's number 169 or 189. So all in all I think this is a beautiful knife. I will do a little bit of a longer review because I want to talk about the history um, of Worcester Home. I do have a number of uh, Worcester Home knives, old and uh, modern, uh, but a couple of these limited editions that they've done recently have been absolutely beautiful. I showed this one last year. Again, this was sent to me by Eggington Brothers. It's one of the most beautiful knives I've ever ever owned. Now, I'm, I've never been a fan of the gunstock pattern. I've never been um, shy of saying so. But this is just one beautiful knife. 
um, and it could be any pattern and it would still be beautiful um, so I, I'm very fond of this knife and again because it has this stabilized burr wood um, to it um, now there was one other knife I wanted to show you the letter there mentioned the village of Stannington which as I say is on the outskirts of Sheffield now this knife here if you can read it try and get the light on it right it says Stannington Barlow and this knife came out of the the shed um, Britain has a great tradition of making things in sheds and uh, one of the greatest parts of that tradition is Stephen Cocker's knives and this came out of Stephen's shed um, I, I think it was a year before last it might have been last year but I think it was the year before so 2022 I think um, which was what he called his Stannington Barlow and it was taken from an old pattern book so again you can see this size wise it's about the same sort of size but the most important reason why I'm showing you this is that um, Stephen is the I think uh, I think his title is production manager but basically he's the head pocket knife man at um, uh, Worston home and if he didn't make these three knives he supervised the person who did unfortunately unlike um, Taylor's eyewitness they don't tell you who actually made them which I think is a bit of a shame I think you're missing a trick there so um, uh, Eggington Brothers if you are watching this video there's my top tip provide a little letter like that and have them signed by the person that's made them it gives an extra collectability edge for the um, for the collector anyway I was going to make this a really short video it's ended up much longer than I expected but this is a lovely lovely knife you can buy these at the moment from um, Engine Brothers website they will make them only this year at the end of this year 2024 they'll stop making them and um, I'm sure, sure in the future they're bound to be a, uh, a real collector's item because it's 400th anniversary is the biggest anniversary anybody who's alive today is ever likely to see from them um, we won't um, there'll be none of us around I suspect in another hundred years certainly I hope I hope I won't be anyway beautiful beautiful knife if you like this stuff please uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, um, if you if you'd like to subscribe or leave a comment or whatever these things all help the channel to grow uh, it's a very niche business the knife um, uh, showcasing YouTube community so we're never going to get the millions of subscribers that some um, genres have but uh, building it up a few thousand at a time does help to get um, knives like um, these along for review um, I'm not a rich man I can't afford to just keep uh, buying things just to just to show you lovely people but if I'm going to persuade um, manufacturers to send me things um, I need to have the subscriber base in order to justify it and um, the more subscribers I have the more likely they are to send things I tend to ask for things because I don't want to just have to review things that are foisted on me I'd rather review things that I actually really like and obviously I, I like Sheffield knives I collect Sheffield knives I like to promote Sheffield knives and if um, I can persuade any of the manufacturers to provide me with um, examples in order to promote uh, their brands I'm very happy to do it because I, I'm very interested in the history and tradition and I want to see that preserved okay well there we are a bit of a ramble thank you all for watching see you all again soon bye